locked into the padded room with DJ Waffles. You already know what it is. Your boy DJ Waffles on the check-in. And I told you, this is the Beats and Books Know and Grow podcast today. With my mm-hmm. special guest, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Javar Rockamore, Gourmet Jorge, one-third of the loopholes. I'm in the building. Gourmet Jorge. Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you explain? Um, How do I get the name Gourmet Jorge? Oh, you know, we used to be freestyling and all the time when I was back in college. And okay. um, I said it in a rap and everybody used to, you know, how college is. We all congregate, party, and I would do cooking. And I would do a lot of the cooking okay. and stuff and just kind of stuck. And okay. Make beats. And, you know, we call beats. Like, if we if we was making beats, you'd be like, yo, you trying to cook up? Right. Like, that's, you know, that's the lingo. So, Gourmet okay. Jorge is stuck. Definitely. So t- tell us a little bit about your career, like the people that you've been working with so far. Man, I've worked with a little bit of of, uh, of everybody, you know, uh, a lot of hip hop artists from um, Lil Wayne, of course, Future, Moneybag, uh, DJ Khaled, Lotto, Tusi. Uh, I got to look at the list because it's... Oh, we, we know you expect... We know yeah, you expect... <laughs> <laughs> no, not even that. I, I forget. And it's a lot of people that, you know, that I don't remember that because it's been years and I might not listen to the song, but we got Chopper, Wiz Khalifa, nice. NBA Youngboy, uh, Young Nudie, Lil Baby, Tory Lanez, Lil Yachty, Kevin Gates, Tusi, 2 Chains, 21 Savage, T.I. Uh, I think I, I think that's kind of everybody. Amongst other artists <laughs> that are not as big, but, you right. know. A lot of artists. So let me ask you this. As mm-hmm. a producer, what makes you unique compared to every other producer? Like, what's what's your thing? Um, for me, it's taste. Like, okay. I bring a certain level of um, taste and polish that I think. That's that's my quality. Um, I, I don't know. Like, when we start making beats, mm-hmm. I just, I kind of know where to go. I have a mental roadmap, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm just, I'm going to get us there. What was the beginning thought process for you as a producer? Like when you defi- decided to get in front of NPC or you just got into front of the Fruity Loops, like what was your thought process of as a producer? Okay, so I originally was a rapper. Oh, nice. <clears throat> but I'm I'm 35. So I was rapping when I was 15. So it mm-hmm. wasn't like you could go and download beats. You had to know a producer. No. And you had to get a beat CD from them. Okay. And I came across a few beat CDs in my life, but it it wasn't like an everyday occurrence, right. you know? So I taught myself how to make beats. I remember my brother came home one day, because they all knew I was like into it. Mm-hmm. And they was like, yo, it's this program. You can download it. It's free. <laughs> it wasn't free. It was a demo. It was FL Studio 4. Okay. We're on FL 20 now. So if you know, you know. <laughs> it's a long way. time in. And uh, I ain't have a computer. You know what I'm saying? Um, so when I went to school the next day, don't skip school, kids, but I skipped school. I went to the library. I downloaded on the library computer, making beats. Mm. I would go to the library and make beats. <laughs> so yeah, school was cool. I mean, it worked out, I guess. Yeah. So tell me about the first beat that you made that made it to the hands of a artist that was in the industry. <sighs> first beat I made. Okay. So this would be like one of those, um... Fun facts. It's like one of those right. deep cuts. <laughs> right. Because you, you technically can't count it, but I'm going to count it. But this is also a lesson, okay? Don't think about the money. Okay. So before I moved to Atlanta, I moved to Atlanta in 2013. I had graduated college. I was trying to find a job. You know, it was around the market crash. It was horrible out here. So I couldn't find a job, and I was trying to figure out what to do. And my brother sent... Um, one of my beats to somebody and they sent it to Shawty Low somehow. Mm-hmm. So they reach out to me. I'm like, how did y'all even get this beat? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they, you know, they stole the email thread or whatever. So I was able to see my brother. I'm like, this nigga, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I was like, all right, bet. Just, uh, you know, I went online because they was doing like $50 leases at this point. Okay. By the time I really got good enough, they, it was online. You could sell beats. It was SoundClick. And uh, I was like, give me $50. And they wouldn't give me $50 because this was also, I, it sounds crazy. Right. But at the time, me being a businessman now, the music industry was in shambles. There wasn't 
it wasn't Spotify and Apple Music. It was that piff in my mixtapes. Right. And you know, it wasn't right. any money. Well, people were making money, but it wasn't how it was normally going. So they wasn't trying to pay me for the beat. And I told them, nah. So that was the first time. It, it, but in that moment, I realized, well, shit, if Charlotte Lowe wanted it, you know, I can, you know what I'm saying? Right. But looking back, you so know. So you turned them down because they didn't want to pay. turned them down. They didn't want to pay the 50 bucks. They didn't want to pay the $50. And looking back, I should have. Charlotte Lowe's not here with us. He's had mm. so much influence on not just Atlanta culture, but the world culture from done, done it all. I mean, there's certain things that he says and that still resonates. And it's just like, damn, you know, do 50 you, bucks. Do you ever beat yourself up? about um, stuff like that? Like when people ask you nah. for beats and then the next thing you know, they come out with a hit and you'd be like, that could have been me? Mm -mm. Because I know about divine timing and you know, mm -hmm. was was meant for you, you can't miss it. Okay. You can try your hardest. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's like the day you die. You can try. It's go. It's gonna be there waiting on you for sure. So let me ask you this. If Future and Moneybag Yo call you up at the same time mm -hmm. as a producer, who you're taking, who you taking the session with? And it ain't up for debate like later, after. No, like right now, we both need you at Patchwork, Tree Sounds, like at eight o'clock, where you going? Um, well, me being again a businessman trying to think big, I'm gonna try to put them together. I'm like, yo, you know, <laughs> a bag in town, you know, Pluto in town, shit, y'all. But if not, um, I don't know. I might go future just because it's, it's Pluto. Okay. I mean, it, right. it's arguably the, one of the greatest artists of all time. So you say you was a, you, you say you're a businessman now. Yeah. What's like one of the biggest mistakes that you've made as an independent uh, producer when you first got started? Man, that the other producers I mean, in the room can understand. It's so many. I don't even know where to start. Um, First of all, get your credit together. Do your taxes. We'll start there. Because a lot of us are not conditioned to be wealthy. Okay? I don't think people understand that. You're not conditioned to be, you're not set up to be wealthy. So you can get $50,000. You're going to be broke in a couple months. I promise you I'm speaking from experience. I got multiple checks. My first check, I blew in a month. It was $30,000. Gone. I looked up. What I you spending on? I was moving around. You should have came holler at me. I could have told you I'd invest. Well, you got to think about it. <laughs> when, I, when you first get money, I bro, I didn't make a check for five years. Wow. So I was Time in. broke, broke. I'm talking right. about struggling. So you get your first check, I bought my mama a car. You know nice. what I'm saying? I did what we're conditioned to do. Right. And I don't regret that, but I mean, shit, because I, I love that fact. You know what I'm saying? I took my, my first piece of money, I took care of my mama. That's what you're supposed to do. Keep it solid. Don't don't be a sucker. Take care of the people that, that took care of you. But there has to be some medium of like, hey, make sure you pay your taxes. Make, it, make sure you have credit so you don't have to go and spend your money because I didn't have a car. Right. So you got 30000 What do you do? You want to buy a car. Right. But you don't got no credit. You're not about to drive a Honda. I just did right. two records on Pluto and Thug. Right. You're not about to pull up. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I, I leveraged... I was like, okay, I'm about to go, I'm about to find some artists to work with. Okay. So I took my money, I called a bag, because I had worked with him, and a young boy. Called them niggas up. They was in Houston together, coming out there with y'all. I don't need y'all to book nothing on my own travel. They were shocked. Like, okay, cool, pull up. It was kind of, they was like, oh, right. they didn't know, like, you sure? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm pulling up. Pulled up, just following them niggas, moving around with them. On my own dime. So when I looked up a month later, <laughs> shit, it's over with. <laughs> <laughs> how many records? How many records you had in by then? Um, shit, that was my first couple of little go <laughs> <laughs> So, so let, let me ask you this: as a as a producer for the producers in the room, mm -hmm. should they do splits before the record is done in the studio, or they should do splits afterwards? Because I feel like it could be like. Disrespect, but it's like business at the same time when you in a room with them and you it's got kind of it's well that's kind of the old school way of it right. if it being done now. A lot of it is, I guess you could say, is done on sort of a handshake, right? But what it boils down to is, okay, let's just say me and you in a room, right? Waffles, you my man, I know you. Right. you know what I'm saying, right? We cooking up it, by legal terms. You know, I thought I turned my phone on. Hold on. By legal terms, you can't 
um, nobody can get more than anybody. So right. if me and you make a beat together, we have we get 25 25. There's no other way around it unless I relinquish five, 10 percent to you. Right. So at the end of the day, I mean, there's really nothing to argue about. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Now, if somebody says, well, you didn't do anything, okay, now that's an argument, but there's nine times out of ten other people involved. Mm. You know, that's there from the engineer to the artist to the songwriter mm. to a manager may have been in a room, a girl, a chick may have been in a room. Right. Somebody there to verify it. And we're gonna bring them to court. We're gonna say, was well, this person, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, but nine times out of ten, you're not working with people like that. Mm. You know. So let me let me ask you this. If me and you didn't do paperwork, mm -hmm. On, on a on a song, right? Mm -hmm. And the song really doesn't take off or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Should I still be able? Should I still fight you for the rights to be on a, on that record? Like if it really doesn't go, because I feel like some That's producers would be like, "Well, you know, the record ain't do nothing anyway." So I, I got ain't a doing few a big like work. that. I got a few. I'm sure there's a lot of producers oh, that do what? that. Like, I got, oh, yeah. I got like six records, man. Maybe more than that. Definitely, I got a lot <laughs> of records. Let me stop playing. I got a lot of records out right now. That's done by independent artists. Shout out my nigga Mook. He just released. I see he called me too. I got to call him back. <laughs> he just dropped out of nowhere. This is my dog too. Fuck with him. Young right. nigga. But can I curse on you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You, you already there. My bad. Uh, young there. nigga. But I fuck with him. He just dropped. And at first when I look, I'm like, damn, you know, this nigga dropped. I'm waking up seeing this shit. He tagged right. me. But I'm like, you know what? I'd rather you do that than hold the music and do nothing with it. So by all means, we'll figure it out later because I know that's the other thing. Know how the music industry works, and right. then you're going to make the money. I know how it works. You can't steal nothing from me. Nothing. Mm. There's nothing that can be stolen from me. Now, if you want to steal an ideal intellectual property, right. Right. okay, you might slightly can get away with that mm -hmm. unless I can prove. I can pull up my computer. I can show you dates. We got records. It's all in the cloud now. Right. So I wouldn't worry so much about stuff like that, like splits. Just make sure you have evidence you were in the room because that's how they really go off. And now, if you in the room, you got to stand. So if you got a video saying that I, that I was in the room, then that stands up in court as a producer. It will stand up. You might not get the percentage that you want, but if you can prove you was in the room during the creation, mm -hmm. shit, you can argue. Man, I was vibing. Now, if the whole room collapses and say, "Nah, man, that man added nothing," then it's cooked. But right. if you got other people saying that, nah, it's it's going to be a compelling argument. So what's the best way for a producer now to shop, shop their shop their own product? Because like you got a you got a million independent artists, but yeah. who how do you know who's worthy to get on my beats? And I'm just starting. Good question. Good question. Um I'm glad you said the independent artist because right. that's who y'all should be kind of shopping to anyway. Fine, I made a mistake, or I didn't make a mistake. I just lucked up in the first couple records I did. Just happened to be with Future and Young Thug. Right. But now I'm trying to break an artist because that's how you really get the respect as a producer mm -hmm. is breaking an artist. You want to break an artist. So how do you know? You just feel it. Like, go off your gut. Look around. See what the see how other people are reacting to them. Do they galvanize right. people? You so know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm glad that you said that. So there is, there's a thing with a DJ breaking a, a breaking an artist right mm -hmm. and breaking a record and then a producer breaking the record tell me what that looks like from a producer standpoint because okay. i know what it looks like from a dj standpoint what does it look like from a producer standpoint when you say a producer breaks an artist okay shout out to my brother Tay keith okay sexy red okay that's what it looked like okay okay it looked like when you give them that sound that they mm -hmm. didn't have before Cause she was doing this shit for like four years, three, four, five years. Right. Running around. Right. Take Keith lock in. Fuck these niggas up, Take Keith. It's a different feel. Mm. Mike Will, um, he's done it. Who else is is breaking artists as a producer? Uh, Metro did it with 21. I can, I can you see know, that. you give them that sound and you produce them. You say, ah, oh, that ain't the record. You your album needs to sound like sound like this. Or you need to go with that single, or you need to. Yo, you need to take your voice down. You're too hype. Like, that's how you break an artist as a producer. You give them the direction. Sounds feel, simple. Yeah. I feel like Drake, I feel like Drake and Noah has that, mm -hmm. that chemistry. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who was Jeezy's uh producer, but I felt like when Jeezy started rapping. Shorty Red. Yeah, Shorty Red. Shorty Red. I feel like he tailored the beats. 
to Jeezy because I felt like Jeezy didn't know how to rap like that in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It was just him just talking trap stuff. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. it was For like sure. bar. It was like bar, bar, bar. A yeah. and he kind of made that space so that he could say that so he didn't have to really rap. Yeah, I mean, but now that's really done, man. Like. The the age of the producer, producer, the uh -huh. Quincy Joneses, the Dr. Dre's, they don't allow us to do that. Okay. You pull up, they want you to play beats, pre-made beats. And I'm like, I got a bunch of them and I and I'll do it because that's the job. I'm not gonna mm -hmm. go against the grain. Okay. But I always tell them, if you really want the best product, we're gonna cook up in front of you. You gotta get the dope cooked in front of you and smoke right. it right here. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Just keep it real. Okay. So, I mean, that's you know, but you bring the loopholes, because shout out my, my loophole brothers, Stony Keys, um, Soul Sounds, Cloud. We come in the studio, we're going to occupy five, six, seven songs on your album immediately because you're going to get, you ain't never seen nothing like this. You got niggas playing the keyboards, guitars, basses, right. niggas bringing out so simps. So y'all y'all corner in the market as soon as, they walk in the, as soon as they walk in the room? Yeah, it's other people that do it too. Shout out to 15, uh, 1500 or nothing okay. from uh, LA. They're dope as fuck. Um, they do it, but it's it's not a lot of that going on. Like, yo, let's make some records. Let's get in here. Let's bring the instruments. Bring your sims. Bring all the microphones you got. Let's try different microphones. Let's try different preamps. Let's bring a choir in. Let's shit. I don't know. Let's bring four writers in. Let's do. So that that's where the taste. That's where the taste comes in at because you want to expound taste, on it. Taste. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. So before we get out of here, let everybody know how they can follow you on social media. How they can get your beats. My name is uh, Javar Rockamore, Gourmet Jorge, one third of the loopholes. Javar said, pick up that bag on Instagram. Pretty much everything. Uh, follow me on YouTube. I'm, I'm starting up my YouTube content where I've been just giving a little game and stuff and production tips. Um, how to get beats from me? Bump into me. Reach out to me. Like, you know, if you got a budget or not, like if you special, if if you don't got a budget, you better be the most special thing in your city. <laughs> and I got you. <laughs> now, nah, if you ain't got a budget and you, but you know you special, reach out. But if you're not special, I'm going to take the time out to tell you, you're not special for reaching out to me. So don't waste your time. Like you said, don't waste nobody's time. But if you are special, reach out, man. We trying to break some talent. We trying to um, change the world through music and sonics. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Cymatic frequencies. All right. So I, I, I just have one more. I just have one more question. What's up? What's overdoing it for a tag for a producer? Tag. Because it just feels like sometimes they they getting they getting over they they going too far now. If like you're they not saying, Pierre like, Bourne, it, yeah, Tay Keith, who else? Metro, the original people that got tags that are original that that have the original voice, the like. Cause a lot of these niggas tags is just re-rocked of other people tags. Yeah, it'd be crazy. It'd be like, it's Dexter with the beat in the lab. Check. And I'd be like, bro, you just too that was too much. So I don't use tag. tags like, anymore. I stopped. That's aggressive. You know I think? stopped using tags. People are like, oh, you just, uh, it's tacky. Is okay. it about the record or is it about you as the producer? If it's about okay. you, I don't want to be a part of it. Cause I'm trying to make a hit that's about the song and the artist. Mm -hmm. We play the backdrop. You gotta know that. Play the backdrop. Hit your bandwagon. It's not about you. Go be an artist. Why don't you tag? Go go rap. There you go. You heard it here first. If you want to put a tag on it, you might as well be a rapper. Two words. I'm out. A. Hey. Wow. Did y'all finish the song upstairs or get an idea later? You left me when I needed you And I never ever mistreated you In the moonlight, I used to fuck your body all night I believed you, now it's my time to release you I'm a bad bitch, never number two Cardi, Harley, bad bitch body One off set, don't stop this party Pink lips, pink pussy, I'm the biggest star Cardi queen of the city in that foreign car I believe in love, so I'ma love again But this time I'll make sure he gotta check the spin I'm really thinking about you, you know I'm really thinking about you Looking you straight in the heart, never gonna leave you about you Never gonna leave you like straight in the dark The way that you sit on my mind, the way that you really is One in a row, you're never gonna waste all your time, yeah
Let them know that it's the time to shine. Gotta step up to the plate. Follow the fate, believing in yourself, feeding the rest. Tell me what you see, baby. I think we can be something. Make me believe in love. You make me believe now. Make me believe in love. I think I believe now. Tell me what you see, baby. I think we can be something. Make me believe in love. Whether the storm gave you heartbreak and licking the cuff Whether the pleasure or treasure or trust Fund the faith of the framework Or list the ones that you lust The ones that you lost, remember the one Memories won't hinder the history The future is bright, bust The love that I need Something I gotta believe The Bible I still gotta read You know them folks still gotta see And I got the vision that boy so consensus You know I'm still on my knees, I'm praying Gotta do it every day You know what I'm saying 